All right, so let's uh, let's do some blue, blue shadows, or shall I say, Payne's gray shadows. They don't have a real wide range of motion to the sculpt, so be careful there. You're not going to get real dynamic sculpts. I mean, you know, the, the feet are walking, but they're big, chonky Terminator boys, so. Guess we could turn this thing on. So nobody gets mad at me. Not on. Oh, because I'm zoomed in, huh? There. Gotta raise it up just a hair, maybe? Zoom out a little bit so you can see what my uh, klutzy fingers are doing. The whole point of this camera is not to show you a lot of detail, but to just show you how I'm, I'm working the brush. You can see how I attack my spray. On this, it's pretty much all over, so there's not a whole lot of explanation needed, I don't think, for what we're doing right here. I think the Terminators, maybe we do all black uh, helmets. That could be pretty cool. Alrighty. Bam, boom. Uh, you know, I'm kind of thinking, like, maybe we do something really funky with, like, dark plum up to red and then into orange. So we get kind of a neat, cool, like, base for shadow, maybe? Time to play with color again, boys. Yeah, and I got them with the torsos separate, so you can twist them however you want, but they're not going to give you a lot of variation on posing on these guys. They're just going to be, they're just going to be really big, right? They're just going to give you the sense of scale that Terminators need to give you, my opinion. The artwork for Warhammer is always better than the models, and the models are fantastic. But in some situations where you have, like, Space Marines, the models bum me out when they are not to scale. Primaris are fantastic. When GW brought out Primaris Marines, my I mean, we talked about it a lot on stream. My hope was that they were getting rid of first-gen Marines when we first saw the picture instead of adding it to the lore and making it some story about Belisarius Call and 
all this nonsense. But, I mean, I get, I think I get what they're doing. I just wish they would have, you know, just replaced Space Marines with real scale. Space Marines would have been a lot better. Uh, let's use some Dark Plum. Dark Plum. Are they that much bigger, Wolfen? They are enormous. Let me just give you an idea, right? Here is... Here is... Normal Terminator. Got a Fracti Terminator. With normal Marine. That's first gen. Firstborn Marines. Let's go back to the other cam so you can... Get it better here. So... Not much difference. A little bit. A little bit chonkier, but not much. And we already know the firstborn Marines are kind of squatty body anyway. But here's normal Marine, Terminator. And then here is what a Terminator should be. Get the feet at the right level. Right? I was showing against Primaris. So they look correct even up against the Marines that are supposed to be bigger, chonkier. The armor has more girth to the legs and the torso, right? It's just much better. This is what I've always wanted a Terminator to be. So I'm, I'm super stoked, right? I mean, I love these. The Cataphract, I look good if you could just scale them up or if everything was just smaller, <laughs> you know? But obviously, scale creep. Being what it is. These are great. McSalty are Custodes up to scale? They're a little bit bigger than the normal Marines. Uh, they're more like Primaris, but no, they're not. The Terminators aren't the right size. They're bigger. The Custodes, normal guys, stand up to uh, uh, Primaris pretty well. All right, so I'm going to do the Dark Plum from up above, and we'll see how this goes. Give us a good feel for that initial Zenithal-style highlight direction here. Dark Plum is such a bitch in color that it should work really, really well for what we're doing here. And this is, again, all about just keeping my angle to the model situated properly. I like keep a lot of that blue intact as we go. I'm going to have to cheat and sneak underneath and get areas where the shield is blocking and stuff like that. Because I don't want areas to be completely blue. That's going to be a little bit funky for us going for red blood angels. But I want to uh, I want to have a lot of the blue survive. That gives us a really good basis for our red, right? Really good shadow color. We've got that dark plum sitting over that dark Payne's gray. I nearly said dark blue. That Payne's gray. And now I think we just go freaking bold pyro red. I don't think we mess around. 
I think we just go bold pyro red right over the top of this. Normally I might do like burnt red, but I think with the airbrush, I think just bold pyro red is going to be the key. Give us what we want. Just do it real thin and layer it up. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's see what we get. I like that shadow color though. That's a really good kind of wine, blood red feel to it. Use as much of the uh, signature set as we can. Tim, what's going on, man? Pains and dark plum, you got it. Stop spending your money, t -Schmid. They're not going to let you come to the stream anymore. The studies would be bigger than that Terminator? I don't think so. Um, maybe some. You know, the thing that they do with the Custodian Guard is that they they have they are bigger than your normal Marine, but they liken them to being like the Terminator scale, right? So Custodes Terminators might be bigger than normal Terminators. That that could be an argument, right? But yeah, I, I'm with you. I think that like true scale Custodes would be bigger than true scale Marines by a long shot. So. Now you know. Now you see the can of worms you open up, right? It's like, okay, well then, where does it stop? Because <laughs> I want a true scale dreadnought right now. I can't find one. Um, and it and it looks janky when you try to take the GW dreadnoughts and turn them into true scale dreadnoughts. The reality is the Leviathan dreadnought would be the right scale. So I feel like what I probably will do is take a Leviathan Blood Angel dreadnought and then just give it the regular dreadnought loadout. The problem is the base size. The regular Dreadnoughts are on 60 mil, and the Leviathan's on like a 85 or something like that. It's a big difference. So I'm not sure if that would work. Just have to play it out and see. Isn't the Emperor 10 feet tall? I don't know. I've never met him. <laughs> but um, The Emperor is tall as a house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I've never met him. They won't let me in to see him. I keep telling them I have a hall pass. They just look at me funny, tell me to go away. I'm like, okay, golden boy, but I'll be back. My mom. All right, back to Cam Air. The button over here says Cam Air, Air Cam. Uh, Bold Pyro Red. Oh, missed. Un, de, lots. Holy cow, that's way more red than I wanted. That's way more red than I wanted, folks. And I need to not have that big drop of red on my desk, most likely. Be bad. Be bad, be bad. I'm just wasting paint like nobody's business today. Need a new bottle of red. And I am going to put... What are we going to put in here? Just water? Let's just put some water. We'll just do water. Let's do a uh, a little squirt. Stir that up. It's very humid here right now. It's been raining for like multiple days straight. So I, what I don't want to do is add a lot of flow improver. I think water will do us just fine for thinning this down pretty good. We'll see, but I think we'll be okay. Get that brush sort of rinsed out. I'm gonna backflow that just a little bit. All right, now we should have should have dirty nozzle, dirty tip. Should have. There we go. Let's see what we can do. See what mistakes we can make here. I'm going to kind of start up top. 
pulse. Pulse on my finger. Just a little very hesitant hits of the trigger. About four to six inches away, as you can see. That's freaking awesome. Probably should use the other airbrush. This one's not really performing very well. Show you on the other cam what we're looking at. That's a very neat red. Dark Plum is a heavy hitter here. Like, severely heavy hitter. I'm really digging that. Now it's just determining how far do we want to push the red. I think you get the idea of how I'm spraying. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably just spray this way so you can see more of the color as it happens. Get a little bit of a fade with a little bit of the brighter red towards the end of the ankle down here. So I'm aiming past. I'm kind of aiming at my finger back here. Okay. So I can build up that fade in that bottom corner. But then we wrap around into the shadow of the front. But I want to get that toe in there too. So I'm going to get in a little closer. Just kind of aim right at that toe. So just piggy toe on the outside. Like so. Then I want to kind of build up a little bit of red at the bottom of the shin here out towards the piggy toe again, like that. So again, the red creeps in and around and leaves that nice, deep, Payne's gray plum shadow going on there. Gives us a lot of contrast. I'm liking it. Get this toe here. Here, I'm going to want to get more red on the bottom of the shin, right by the above the ankle. And I probably want to bring the light around a little bit this way. I think my, uh, yep, needle's all gummed up. You were just saying that about Dark Plum. I saw you said you really like Dark Plum. It's a fantastic color. The way it bridges the gap from blues and purples to reds is just tremendous. Of course, that, you know, always depends on what you're trying to use it for, but... More red down by the foot. That really makes that foot come out from underneath the body. Probably punch a little bit of color on the top of the thigh here.
need to get the top of his breastplate. Again, I'm in probably inch away. Bounce a bunch more red into smaller and smaller spaces up here around the top. I love that shadow of his nose, the beak of his helmet there. That looks pretty good. Might want to drag a little bit of red right down the chest. Not too much, though. Aiming for the skull on the chest so that most of my paint goes there because we're going to paint that over. That way I just get the overspray on the chest, the shadow of the skull. Bring this red, this brightness down a little bit towards the front on this shoulder here. So. I really like the red shoulders, so we may just leave them red. Might put like a black stripe on the shoulder. I'm really digging how the uh, the plum, Payne's gray, red works across that curve of the Space Marine shoulder plate. So I don't know if I want to upset that too much. And uh, about four inches back, just kind of feathering that red so it gives me a little bit more punch of red as I go into the darkness on the shoulder plate. Not real sure what the shield wants to be, but we're going to go ahead and put some red on it anyway. Yeah, I think bone white on some of it, Dot. The Crux Terminatus part, probably bone white and the skull. And then gold laurel or something like that. Gold trim. Figure that out. But I like the idea of the bone color on it for sure. Okay. Looking at the top, we've pulled the brightness a little far front. We need that brightness to go back a little bit on the shoulder here. All right, so... A little bit of brightness on the back of the backpack area there. I'm comfortable with this shoulder. It looks good. Then as we look down, I probably want a little bit of brightness on the end of the butt plate as it pokes out. Remember, the butt plate has this angle to it, so it would be brighter at the bottom than at the top, maybe. Do that. some air right now that was a little wet so i want to make sure i flash dry that let it pool pull that something like that Elbow. Here. I have to hold the brush back six or eight inches so I can get some feathered red in the wrist area. I don't want it to be as bright as on top of the elbow or the shoulder plate. Might want a little bit of brightness right down here at the bottom of the waist. Got to be careful with this, though. Uh, 
about three inches away. Get the waist and the belt line area. We're really thin, so we can layer it up a little bit and not hate ourselves, but I like the shadow from the torso. And then bump up this uh, back side of the ankle again, right? As we're looking down, we can see how we need to be brighter down here. Again, we'll just kind of... I can get it to where the camera sees what I'm doing. Maybe if I turn like this. Oh, that works really well, actually. Huh? There we go. Bunch of good contrast going on now. Very grim dark. Probably a little bit more brightness on his forearm here, so I'm going to rotate it. You notice I'm rotating the model so that generally I'm trying to shoot my color from the idea of being the light source. So the sun or something like this, right? Um, and it also means that I'm not going to get overspray on all this. If I sit here and I paint the top of the forearm like this, right? Then I'm going to get red all up into those nice shadows. So I want to try to isolate the shadows away from my spraying direction like this. And then just get in like this. A little bit more red across the forearm and hand. A little bit of red along his belt and crotch, probably just so they're not completely dark plum and Payne's gray. You can kind of see how the this leg gets mostly Payne's gray in there. We want to feather a little bit of red in there too. My nozzle keeps clogging up because I'm just using water. You can see how the needle is completely paint right now. Did I get tired of Death Guard? No, I just said that it's an emergency blood angel. I said from the beginning that we would stop every now and then on the Death Guard and find something else to work on. Because I knew I was going to get tired of just painting the same models over and over and over and over and over again. I reserve the right. <laughs> you can't tell me any different. Just a little bit of red on the crotch. Maybe take this brighter red down a little bit more on the belly plate and belt area. That's looking pretty good. Loose the red up on that little thigh plate over there, or hip plate back there. Pull back again, six or eight inches, start to feather down here by the ankle. Right. 
get a little bit of glow reflection of light off the ground, but leave all the rest of the inner areas there very dark. Starting to look really good. I'm going to feather a little bit of this shoulder plate here. Just like we did this side. Elbow back here. This one. A little bit of air. I like that. A little bit of glow on the bottom of the shoulder plate is good. I'm digging it. I think that might be all we need. Uh, maybe a little bit on the ankle back there. Just because. This not really a realistic lighting reason to do this. Other than the reflection off the ground perhaps. All right, let's take a look. That Payne's gray plum gives us a really neat shadow. And then I'm really, really digging the red. Very dark. So the thing I got to think about right now is, is this what I want? I'm going to, I'm going to pump the, uh, the red up a little bit with the red orange, just very tight in on the highlight spots. I got to be thinking about, is this what we want for the red or do I want to bring the red down further, push the shadows back? Or do I like this? I, I kind of like this. It doesn't give us a lot of landing spot for the highlight up on top of the shoulders, right? That's the only thing that makes me think I probably ought to pull the red down around the shoulder a little bit more. Feather it down. So that I have enough spot to put that brighter orange on there. Otherwise, the shoulder is going to look a little funky. First airbrush or compressor. Yeah, the uh, the... The brush that I'm using right now is fantastic. It's our XG model. We do it with Grex. The TG top trigger pistol grip is also very good. All right, I'm going to see you guys are. Again, I'm about six to eight inches away. Aiming at the top of that shoulder. So I can feather that red down into the shadow. I have it so far away from the model so that it doesn't pile up a tremendous amount of color. It blends in nicely with that darkness. I think that gives me a much better landing spot for my orange. Leave it dark on the back. That's fine. And on this one, same thing. But this one will leave it dark on the front. Now I think those shoulders look a lot better. Just that little bit of push of red over the edge, right? Gives us a really good color. I need a little bit more on the top here. around is what would be the gorget. I don't know what the hell you call that, but maybe a little bit in there on the forearm, kind of dark. Again, about four or five inches back.
Nice quick blend through there. Right to his fingers in red. A little bit more red on that cuff of the arm there. From our worm's eye view, mostly Payne's gray and plum. A little bit of halo of the red. Where I cheated a little bit. And then from the top, all red. That's what we're looking for. Means when we cut it in half, we got good. We got good shadows for all of these uh, rivets on his chin plate. Really good shadow movement across all the curves and cylinders of the Terminator. I'm digging it. Let's do some red orange. Clearly, the viewers dictate the content. <laughs> Main Shaman. This is literally just Payne's Gray uh, from Vince's set as a base coat. Payne's Gray. Then Dark Plum from John's set. And then uh, Bold Pyro Red. That's what we've done. So it gives us that really nice, cool shadow for the red but I didn't want to use my standard dark purple and I didn't want to use dark blue. I didn't want it to be super blue, right? I just wanted it to be a nice deep shadow for the red. And I think the Payne's gray and the dark plum nail it. And then the bold pyro red is such a good red. Bam. I mean, this is really thin, but we're getting such amazing red out of it just by pumping it over pretty much just one layer. If you want to call it that it's technically more layers than that because we've been doing it thin and building it up. And all I did was thin it with a, water about uh i don't know 30 percent thinning with water something like that probably should have used uh glaze wash medium to thin it with but i was going quick And yeah, Creepy, I'm with you. It looks really good. But I do want to highlight all of my reds up to a little bit more orange. So the next one is going to dictate the final look of the shine on the model. With the uh, another color that you guys can't buy. Red-orange. <laughs> Sue me. I've got some paint build up right around the, uh, the place where the cup screws on. So I typically will take a uh, Q-tip and just make sure that I get the wall of the neck in there. All that paint that was built up. And that's all just right here where the cup screws on. Uh, when you do that kind of stuff, when you, you know, go through and put a Q-tip or a paper towel in your airbrush, never pull the trigger and blow air through your airbrush after you've done that. Always rinse it first. So I come over here and just rinse water through there. Uh, that will help flush all of the bits that I loosened up of scrappy paint, um, hair from the Q-tip, chunks of paper towel, all that crap. Then once you've rinsed it nice, then you can blow air through it and it'll start flowing paint again. Physic Evo, what's happening? All right, going to bust out the point two. Creepy, what are you talking about? 
Bretonian looking figs. Nice. Which are for historical gaming, you guess? <laughs> nice. Yeah, we don't... Uh, Grex makes a compressor that goes very well with these brushes. It's just a standard hobby compressor. We don't carry it because we don't want to have to ship it. So God's honest truth, I just don't want to have to uh, ship compressors and stock compressors. They're big items size-wise and very heavy, but we don't dig that. You've gained weight, so you needed a new belt. <laughs> well, okay then. Get some red, orange here. Color we are working on. It will be in a forthcoming expansion set. Not quite available yet. But a great color. We're just going to get the point two here, and I apologize if I hit my hand. You can watch my trigger finger, but you may not be able to see everything I do here. Let's see if I turn like this again. That seemed like this might have helped a little bit. That build up. Brightness on the shoulder there. Right in the center of the... back there and the cross the top plate of the head over here on this shoulder uh so hard for me to uh show you what i'm doing here maybe this will work eh, i could probably make hey, that work somebody likes us there hey somebody likes us Hey, I like you too. Gallant Griff, what's going on? Now this orangey red, we only want to keep up towards the highlights, uh, towards our light source, right? This is not a color we want to put like all the way into the shadows and things like that. So we got to kind of pick and choose where we want it to go. Red orange creepy, it's a newer it's a new color that we're working on. This is just a mix. Right in the center of the back plate back here. It gives us that perfect shine to red when you want to push it warmer. Right, orange is not always the right color for red, um, but it definitely can be. Going pretty thin, top of the elbow there. This butt plate. Get that corner of the butt plate a little bit. I want to bring the orange a little bit back, uh, further down the back here of this left shoulder plate. More like that. And then the ankle it peeks out into the light. So, again, keep the cat the shadows cooler. Don't force a lot of that orange up onto these bits. Right? We can do it with a brush if you want to catch a little bit of this orange-red on the top of that doohickey there to highlight it later on. You can. Don't do it with the airbrush. Try to make sure you, you can control yourself so that we really just give that warmth of, like, sunny glow 
down here on the ankle that pops out, but not the thigh. If we do it on the thigh, it brings the thigh and the leg and the body back there further towards the eye. When we leave them cool and dark like this, it pushes them away from the eye, right? So the upper body here, we want to make sure we get enough of the orange to really make it work. I'm really liking the carapace here. Top of that thing. Again, neck area on the armor here. Brighten that up. Bring a little bit forward. Shoulder there. You bring the orange a little bit forward on the shoulder. Not much. And I'm, I'm trying not to push bright color onto the face of the Terminator armor up above the top here. I really like the way the Payne's gray and the dark plum are giving me that shadow there. Probably want to get the just the top of his knee with a little bit, and then his foot. You may not be able to see as I do this, but top of the knee right there. That. And then the foot. And heavier on the foot than the top of the knee. Because the top of the knee, is still, he's still bulky boy, right? He's still got a lot of shadow from arm and shield and everything that's getting the top of the knee. So not a whole lot there. But the foot comes out by itself, so that's fine. Probably want a little bit on the pinky toe here and this ankle. I'm shooting past the model, letting the overspray get on that corner there. And then same thing here. I'm going to paint this part of the base with the airbrush and let the overspray... Come back to give me a little bit of color on the foot. See, but I painted that right there so that the paint spraying into the cone of the overspray gets just the edge of the boot there. Brightens up just that outside edge, but allows my shadow to really come naturally across the front of the model. Top of the arm back here. And I'm using a 0.2 needle right now mainly just to control the amount of overspray I get. I'm also blasting so much air through this that my needle is super gummed up. I just want to get that little line. The top of the hand there. That. Because again, the body shades a lot of that. Probably get a little bit more across the top of the hand plate. That. And then the shield. Leave the darkness here because we have this lip that goes across the top of the Terminatus symbol here, that iron cross looking thing. 
So give it a little bit of darkness, let the red sit right in there. Then do the orange right here at kind of the point of that arrowhead looking thing. And then fade it into the red real quick. Again, brighten up that shoulder just a little bit more. A little dark in the in between the crux terminatus there where the skull is. I really like that. Looking good. Bring the orange a little forward on this shoulder plate too. And I think we have our Blood Angels red. I like it. Maybe a little bit. of orange feathered into this leg over here again just to keep it from being specifically blue that give it a little bit of warmth not too much bingo bingo we done it We done it, chat. Red Marine. Red True Scale Terminator. Now again, I wanted to push the red a little bit more orange because of Blood Angels, right? I, I have a... When I think of Blood Angels, I think of late 90s, <laughs> you know, early 2000s. White Dwarf Blood Angels, lots of orange, almost yellow, edge highlighting. And yeah, I, I really like this red enough that I don't think we do the shoulders black. I think we leave them red, especially on the Terminators where they're huge like this. Looks really good. We'll do the black helmets and that'll be good. We'll do a black stripe, maybe, on the red shoulder plate. We could do that. Golden brown mixes into warm brown? Well, of course. Not safe for wallet. NS, not, say, NSFW. Not safe for wallet. Just blasting water through the brush to get rid of all this color. And you can see how intense the red orange is. Red orange, pretty much our orange and bold pyro red and a little bit of transparent red in there. Maybe a little bit of transparent yellow. It's a concoction that I made up to get the general color ready, but the uh, the paint we're making is not that combo. It's actually richer and more intense than that combo because it's not mixed, right? It just uses the pyrrole pigment and is uh, pretty much fine on its own. Uh, and this type of armor is better to use a red base and put highlights with an orange, Mauricio? Um, so I used a base of, of blue and, and plum and then red, and then orange, right? Uh, I prefer the cool colored base for red because it gives you a much more depth to the shadow. I, I, maybe that's not right. We could use mahogany and use a very deep red or burnt red and you know keep it a very dark red, reddish brown for our red base coat if you wanted. But I'm of the mind that blues help to give a lot more interest to the model long-term. So that's what we've done here. Right, with the panes gray and the plum. Right. So we have this nice 
interesting shadow color that doesn't feel necessarily at first like it's supposed to be part of red, but works so well with the red that you don't complain about it, right? You could use dark purple. I use dark purples a lot for reds, things like that. It's up to you, but I think that if you wanted to go to an orange, you know, to like a, a warmer red like this, then the bold pyro red as your base and then the orange highlight works tremendous, as you've seen, right? Now, I just have an, a red orange, but you could just mix bold pyro red and orange together and you'll get the same general feel. For this i wouldn't have used just uh bright orange on here it would be too much it would shift the the red too much to a yellow you check canadian online suppliers daily just to see if you can find a 2.0 box set what's a 2.0 box set we don't call anything 2.0 anymore, so. We used to say it was like base set 2.0. It's not, it's just the base set again. It's been long enough that it's not a 2.0. Nobody remembers what 1.0 was. You got a copy of base set 4.0. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Just looking for the newest. Signature series are the newest. And those aren't in, in Canada yet. So those, yeah, you, those, if you're looking for, you won't find just yet. Soon, though. Okay, so now the determination is how we want to go about that final highlight. We can mix up a final highlight and spray it on there to give a little bit more shine with the airbrush. Might not be a bad thing. Um... Just do a very, very thin spot highlight on it. Or we can just do that with a brush. Uh, I feel like I want to do it with the airbrush. And I think I want it to be... Hmm. Here's the question. Here's the real humdinger, right? Because normally I go into pinks for my, my extreme highlights on, uh, on red armor. But that ain't going to work right now. So we probably want to, uh, we could use like an orange sherbet kind of color, right? We could really just dilute orange down, that red orange. Highlight it with, uh, blah, 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 blah. we'll take our red orange mix that we got and we'll put it in a cup and we'll figure it out, chat. We'll figure it out. Make a highlight color. I don't need a lot. Three or four drops. I don't remember what that was. Call it four. I don't have a lot of that made, so, <laughs> so I was just, that's probably wasteful. Uh, I could use bright warm gray. I could use the new dark ivory. I think I want to use a flesh tone. So I think warm flesh or olive flesh. I think warm flesh is where we want to go. All right, so let's use warm flesh. Not... Not the pinkish fleshes, the warm fleshes. Khaki might work well. I think khaki might be a little dark. But I'm going to use warm flesh. Uh, you think electric salmon would work perfect here, but you say that to everything, so no, I'm not using that. <laughs> Your answer for everything seems to be electric salmon, so no, I'm not doing that. Two drops, so uh, half as much. So uh, two to one. Base to tint. We'll see what that does. We get it started. Uh, and then a bunch of uh, glaze medium. Yeah, the yellowish tone is going to keep us on hue with the red-orange. Right. So here we just go blap a lot. That was a lot. And then we get a bunch of water on our brush, a big number six mixing brush that's all splayed out. And we do this. And that, my friends, is our highlight color. A peach sherbet or something, right? Pretty thin. A little bit of water will get us right where we want to be. 
I think. Mm, still too opaque. Uh, I need another napkin. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of medium. Right? And another little spritz of water. Couple drops of water, not too much. I don't want it to get super runny. The medium will keep it like paint. The water will thin it viscosity wise while also getting us less opacity. So it's always with the mediums, it's always a, for me, a balance of how much medium to how much water. That I feel like does us right, right? That's pretty translucent. Maybe another spritz of water. Mad scientisting it here. Since we're going to put it through the airbrush, it, I mean, there is a too thin that we can go, but not really. We're going to call that good. Bam. We'll uh, let you see how bright that is compared to what we got on the model. Perfecto. So we've taken the highlight color that we just used and we added a warm tint to it in the warm flesh so that we can now get the perfect, hopefully, highlight color. Not too pink. It's a peach color, right? So orangey red. Then we'll take the number two again. And we'll just put a little bit in here. I don't want to use too much in here. We'll keep it. Keep the cup out to the side. Oh, yeah, that's a good color. Flesh tones highlight reds really, really well. Just remember that your pre-mixed stuff like tan flesh is a little bit pinker. So that I use when I'm driving reds towards pink. Okay. In my hand, my big fat hand is going to get right in the way here, but... Start to give it a little bit of a metallic shine. Not too bad. We don't want to overtake too much here. A little bit on the toe. A little bit on the shield here. Again, right where these arrow, the cut-ins are, right at the point of the cut-in is where I want the brightest highlight, probably.
Elbow. What plate? And then a little bit on the ankle here. Bring that shine a little bit further down that left shoulder plate. Broaden it out a little bit more on this one. Wrist. You get a little bit on the belly. Careful here. If we can not screw this up. A little bit right there. Might go away when we hit it with the brush, but top of the belt buckle area. I'm about a quarter of an inch away from what I'm spraying right now and just lightly pulsing the trigger, as you can see. You get that little bit of shine on the belly going down onto the belt. A little bit more on the cross section of the shield there. I think brightens that nice lineup. A little bit right at the tip of the shin there as it goes into the toe. It's hunting and pecking right now. A little bit on this thigh, I think. You already need me to release more paints. A little bit more glow on that portion of the wrist there. Boom, I think we're set. I think we're set now, chat. Somebody likes us. Chris Crystallarium paints, what's going on?
I might even put a little touch. We didn't do the orange on that knee back there, right? But I think this highlight would give us just what we need to punch that a little bit up. Like that. A little shock of brightness down that knee. All right. That's about all the airbrush is good for for us, I think. There's quite a bit. That did a lot of heavy lifting. We've got a nice setup for our final highlights. Uh, what you could also do with the airbrush, I typically don't. I typically go from here into the brush. So I'm not trying to paint these guys like super shiny metallic terminators. I want them to be battle damaged to some extent. That was a very, very good highlight color for this, though. Fits right in there. Hopefully you can see what I was talking about with keeping it warm and not quite as pink, right? Red, as you brighten it up, starts going into the range of pinks anyway. But when you have orange and yellow as the base, right, as your mixers, then it stays in that kind of, you know, warm flesh tones that we added there. Tell me you're not out of the Signature Series paints already. You want them so bad? Did you, did you look on the site? They may be. They were getting really, really low today. And every day sells hundreds and hundreds of sets. Not going to lie. So we've been through untold thousands right now. It's crazy. I was explaining to John and Vince the, the way that sales were going, right? Because they get a portion of the sales on each of those sets. It's going to be a nice paycheck for them. Community has stepped up strong. And people that have already got them have really been loving them. All the colors are just absolute jaw-dropping in the set. They all perform really well. We've been using a lot of them on stream. People have seen them. John and his video did a fantastic job showing start to finish that uh, Chaos Cultist or whatever he was. And Vince, of course, knocking it out of the park with uh, Horus Ascended for his. So it'd be nice to see. He'll uh, Vince will be doing more videos, showing us more of the work he's doing on Horus. All right, I like that. That's a really good start. And that's very repeatable as we go through and do lots more. Should I choose to do lots more of these? We have a whole army of them. But <laughs> if we choose to do a lot more of them, we can do all that. It'll be fun. Dark plum and red gray were definitely sleepers when uh, showcasing them on stream. Well, the red gray we use for painting a rock. <laughs> the big, uh, the big uh, idol. What was it called? The rogue idol for my uh, iron jaws. So it's just a big walking rock. So yeah, that one's not as... Uh, as much of a punctuation of showing the versatility of it, although it made that rock look really good real quick, right? So black, brown, red, gray, dry brush. Uh, I don't remember what I did. Dark ivory or olive flesh over the top of that. And then we, you know, washed it down with like some green glaze to make it all mossy. Oh no, I did, I did camo green up in the shadows to make it kind of mossy rock looking. And that was done. Like we painted a big monster in, I don't know, 30 minutes. <laughs> so... The, it, it's a color that helps you knock it out of the park really quick, I think is the biggest deal. All right, so that's a setup for our reds. That's a very good. Again, these guys are just amazing. Like, huge, humongous Terminators the way they're meant to be. Big fan. Yeah, Horus Ascended, the new resin one from GW. I assume it's just GW. I don't know that it's Forge World. Um, it's the the Horus in the later stages of the heresy, is my understanding. Siege of Terra, Horus, kind of a thing. Is it Forge World? Nah, that sucks. 
that seems odd that they're pushing the Forge World model so much, but that's them, right? It's 144 bucks. I mean, that's that's primary. Uh, that's Primark price, right? Most of the Primarks are around there, right? 125, 150 bucks, something like that. Anabolic warp juice. You've been juicing. Arm as you ordered on Sunday. If you ordered and you have an order and then you got them. Bottle the color I just did. I probably ought to. This is a good one. This uh this bright red orange. We could call it bright red orange, I guess, or a bright orange. I don't know. I don't know what the hell we'd call this color. Peach. Vibrant peach. That sounds horrible when you say it like that, but maybe it could be vibrant peach. this color coral yeah coral is is probably what it is right coral is a good name for it although it, it sounds like one of those names people would be like that's not like your other names it doesn't tell me anything i'm like well that's true because coral really isn't that color but <laughs> you know i mean he's cheaper than the lion was the lion 150 i don't remember this paint's super watery, so I don't know that we're actually going to get a whole lot out of brush painting with it, but we're going to see. Not horrible. It actually paints very well. Even though it is super thin, it is still a vibrant enough color that I'm getting some action out of it, which is nice. It's like a, a glazing highlight here. It's working really well. wet in my pants two kinds pristinely ungifted what's going on zoltaris what's happening welcome thank you for the raid thank you thank you thank you goes i was trying to mix some paints to get that color the other day so i'm excited to have Payne's gray to use we're painting a terminator a blood angels terminator and we have just now gotten done with all of our airbrushing. We, uh, for those of you just joining us, we are doing uh, a, a true scale Terminator. We started with our Payne's gray. So this color is the base coat in our new Vince Vincerella signature series set for Pro Curl. Uh, if you don't know us, hi, I'm Jason and we are Monument Hobbies. Uh, that name over there. We make Pro Curl paints. And today we're painting and we started with that guy. Actually, we started with black primer. Then we started with that guy. And then over that guy, we did this guy. Dark Plum. 
A dark plum gave some reddish to our blue shadow. We let the Payne's Gray be in the deepest areas without the plum. We kind of did the plum top down, right? So you do the paint the model blue or Payne's Gray. I'm going to always call Payne's Gray blue. Uh, but you paint the model Payne's Gray. Then you kind of do a, you know, kind of a, a, a 10 and 2 spray all the way around to get the plum set on there pretty deep. And then we just went over it with red. Bang. Red. And then we've been using uh, red mixed with orange, and uh, and then that red orange mixed with uh, warm flesh to get the highlighting started out. And now I'm using that same peach color that came from the red orange and the warm flesh mixed together. We're using that with a little bitty brush and doing some edge detailing. Uh, I was just going to see if it was going to work, and it looks like it is, so we're doing it. Days just to have some fun in the middle of doing our Death Guard charity army. I didn't feel like painting Death Guard today. So. Sorry, Death Guard. But we are also at the same time. Well, not at the same time. That would be difficult. We are also doing this uh, Death Guard army. It's actually, wow. When you put it next to this guy, they're looking pretty good. Death Guard's being a lot of fun. Did Magic Stronghold out of Vancouver get some of those signature paints? I believe so, but they may not have them yet. I, I'd have to check. Unfortunately, while I'm streaming, I can't look at the orders. And everybody's probably gone. Yeah, everybody's gone. The crew leaves at 4. We don't have anybody left here in the office other than Jen, and she's probably not paying attention to me. I haven't seen her in chat today. That is such a good edge color. It's the same color we just airbrushed, but it is going off the brush really, really nice. You can see down here, it gives a really good edge. Because it's so thin... The problem is, I'm never going to be able to mix that again, so... <laughs> so that sucks. So that sucks. Okay, let's do our shine across here. We'll do it... I'm going to come right down here. out of frame so you can actually see what's going on here yeah that got us more in focus too huh I keep switching from painting with a paint handle and not painting with a paint handle, so my focus on the camera hates me right now, so bear with me. Uh, we set up this shine line right here, right? Just kind of roughing it in. We'll do the same thing here. And want to kind of just start back here. And barely spot, just kind of stipple in there, a little bitty streaks, and then come up to this edge and then draw along that edge. And just do it again. And that starts giving us that shine. But again, I'm not going for super shiny. I want that kind of, you know, Space Marine Grimdark shine. 
So I'm only carrying the shine out towards the edge. We let that airbrush glow kind of force back there so we get this blend away from our bright spot in lots of different directions here. Okanaganite. Zoltaris, your first army? Really? Oh, that's awesome. Zoltaris, where are you? Because the uh, the signature series should be making its way pretty much everywhere over the course of the next couple of weeks, depending on where you're at. Uh, the I think the shipment for Canada leaves tomorrow from our office. So that's good news. Uh, Magic Stronghold is a little bit of a diff different beast. They order directly from us. They don't order through distribution in Canada. So if you're in Vancouver, you might be able to get them earlier. I just don't know if they've ordered them yet. If not, you need to run into Magic Stronghold and tell them to get off their butts and order the paints. He's a little behind sometimes. We're not their biggest focus, right? Obviously from their name, they're a card store more than anything. They are a very good dealer. So go kick them in the shins. Say, get the signature series. Uh, a little bit right here. And for those of you that may be sitting around and you got uh, time on your hands, go click on Zoltaris' name and give him a follow. It's free. The way we do things here on the Twitch. Support one another. Grow communities. Have some fun. Paint some models. Tell bad jokes. You know. Do the thing. I'm really digging this model. <laughs> So edge highlighting like this where I do a straight line, I'm starting over here with very light pressure so I barely get any line at all and then pushing harder on the brush as I come across. That gives me that thicker line as I go towards the brighter side of the armor wherever I want to set that up. Gosu, yes, it is a print. Although you can buy them from uh, True Scale Heresy. Pre-printed, like I did. You don't have to print them. I just love the idea. And now that it's in my hands, a True Scale Terminator that is bulked out just right is freaking fantastic. And then I'm laying in a bunch of GW bits all over them for the Blood Angels. For those of you who might not have been here earlier, here's a uh, normal scale Terminator. Here's a real Terminator. These guys mean business against the, the Gen 1 or the uh, Firstborn Marines. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Like, let that go go fight him. He's like, uh, I'll let you go first. Oh, Leonius Rex, did they tell you? Uh, Creepy said, paint, what are you using to highlight? It's this. It's, um, consider it bold pyro red, orange, and warm flesh. Because I did the first highlight with bold pyro red and orange. Basically, what I call red orange. There's some other stuff in here because this is a color we're going to be making soon. Um, but this red orange is the color that we did the highlight. You can see it kind of creeping out between the red and then the darker plum purpley blues, right? That's the highlight that we did on, on the top edges of the armor. And then I just took that and added warm flesh to it. So, And to give you an idea how the red-orange and the bold pyro-red go together, you can see the difference there. Just add a bunch of orange to bold pyro-red. And then I put warm flesh from uh, expansion set four. Warm flesh into that. I think I did four drops of red orange, the mixture, and then two drops of warm flesh, and then I just thin the crap out of it with because uh, I was airbrushing it first, right? Uh, I I kind of wish I hadn't thinned it as much now that I'm using it on a paintbrush, but it's working great. But I thinned the crap out of it with uh, our glazed wash medium and water. The stream came at the perfect time. You just got a lot of the Space Marine Heroes Marines. Oh, nice. The blood, they're the Blood Angels ones, right? With the Terminators and regular Marines, and I was going to do them as Blood Angels, so that's exciting. Awesome. Awesome. I, I, I would recommend this that we just created today wholeheartedly. It looks fantastic. I mean, you be the judge, but I am a big fan of what we have done here. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Dun, dun, dun. Love minis. Thank you for the biddies. What's going on? Sugar Rush, hello. Big Pie, UPS wouldn't leave your package at your house, so you have to go pick it up at Michael's? Am I, am I reading that correctly? Is that really a thing? It seems a, a little far-fetched, doesn't it? I do and love minis. Probably give another line here. We got a lot going on around this area of the gorget neck line. So we're going to do another little reflective spot here to 
be like the reflection of the shoulder or something. I got to do another one right here for the shoulder reflection. Just kind of a quick jab. Also, well, I guess we can do the shoulder itself, huh? And we want the line to get thin as we come down the shoulder. They'll give us a little bit of highlight all the way to the end of the shoulder there, but watch it thicken up as it goes up towards the highlight area. And then almost disappear into nothing as it comes around the face of the shoulder plate there. That causes us to want to brighten up this corner. And to do a little bit of a shine right here. Appreciate art. What is going on? Thank you for the bits. Welcome, welcome. Watching me explain color. Oh gosh. The pressure's on, love minis. Why you gotta do me that way? <laughs> I'm going to go turn the compressor off because I don't think I'm going to spray with the airbrush anymore. That gives me an excuse to drink some water. Delicious. Who knew hydrogen and oxygen could be so delicious? Nick Pie, it's a first for you, at least at Michael's. If there's no one home previously, there was a UPS store location you have to go to. That seems legit. Maybe you, maybe Michael's has like a UPS drop station or something like that. Maybe that's a thing. Seems It literally seems really far-fetched. Like, I'd be like, what? You're entrusting, like, like high school kids behind a counter? With my order? I bet it's at the framing department. Add just a little bit of shine. You're going to notice that those three little dots I put there are going to almost disappear, but they give a little bit of shine back from those studs that fall across that bright line on the shin that I've made. Not bad for, what, how long we've we been doing this? Two hours? Not bad for two hours worth of work so far? Coming together? Looking pretty good? I'll play to get me to buy more yarn to distract you from painting. <laughs> Dang it. They feel like if they leave stuff, if they have a deal with Michaels. That's probably exactly what it is. 
leave your package here. Everybody that, that comes to pick up their package, you say, oh, well, I'm sorry, it's going to take us a little bit to find it. Just uh, just browse around. We have a special on yarn, it turns out. Sugar Rush. More paints before Adepticon. Around Adepticon. I don't think before Adepticon. I think we'll wind up with more paints, you know, being released probably at Adepticon would be more like it. The next uh, signature series set. But we're not sure about that. We got, uh, we got a lot of work to do on that set, so we'll see. We shall see. I got my fingers crossed, though. This next signature series, signature series two, if you will, the artists are both in Europe. So the timeline for approvals and such is elongated quite a bit. So we got to figure all that out. Right? There's a lot of work to be done. And most of the, the work that would be very quick and easy Takes longer because, you know, we got to ship stuff to Germany. get those little crevices they put above the Terminator heads. Never really know what any of that is, but, you know, it's slots. You gotta paint the slots. He just, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Sugar Rush is like, wait a minute. He just said Germany. Who's in Germany? I was sitting here thinking that. I was like, oh, wait, did I just give it away? There's a lot of painters in Germany. And that just might be where the particular painter vacations. You never know. They have a summer home in the German countryside, and that's where we've been asked to send all the paints. Joke's on you. They're French. Oh, wait. This DD Minis guy. Oh, wait, that's you. <laughs> Can't trust you. Because it's you. Yeah, we've opened a real can of worms with the signature series because now there's a lot of artists that are like, well, what if I want a signature series? And I'm like, it's hard. We can't make that many colors. We'll have to see what we can do. I knew it. Tricked myself again. You're like me. You're really bad at this stuff. <laughs> like, oh, I wasn't supposed to use my outside voice when I said that. Dang it.
a little shine around the neck, collar area. The plebs, Nick Pies, the plebs, the, the, it's the Pro Curl Pleb series. <laughs> always been a thing that I've wanted to do to create products that would help other artists survive doing their art, right? We know the drill. We came from, you know, being content creators first before we were product creators. And, uh, you know, we know the how hard it is. It, it may seem like an easy life, but it's very much not if you're really trying to make it your life. Right? Because as you can imagine, just determining enough content to keep people happy is hard. Right? And then staying focused and earning enough to not have to have your day job and all that. So the people that have jumped out and are really attempting to do that in the community, we're big fans of, as always. So we uh, started the signature series stuff with the brushes, right? With Uncle Adam and and Sam Lenz. And that's really been great. The community really rose up and, and enjoyed that whole idea. So paints were a automatic win. But the problem with, uh, with the paints is that it's very difficult to do a whole lot of them. Brushes also, right? You can't just make... There's, you run out of sizes of brushes pretty quick. So we want to make sure that there's a value for each of these signature things so in order to keep that kind of special it has to be fairly limited You get a little bit of shine there for the corner. This this is an interesting area where the big square chonky back area comes together with this rounded shoulder plate. And you have this shine that would be right here on this corner is going to cast. You see how the shadow for it is right here, creating that little shadow. It wants to have a little shine right at the point where that shadow is. But I'll just kind of stipple on there. as a reflection of that corner up top. I'm not trying to get, well, I, I told myself I wasn't going to get real crazy on this. I'm already getting kind of crazy on this, so I'm enjoying painting it. I don't think I could paint a whole army like this, so this is probably screwing me up really bad, but we'll see. Maybe this is the army that takes eight years to paint. I think an army of these guys would be pretty bitching. Lord, what's going on? This is just bold pyro red over Payne's gray and dark plum as my base coats. And then uh, the bold pyro red mixed in with um, orange. You get a red-orange highlight. And then that red-orange mixed with warm flesh to get the color I'm painting now, which is this peachy, you know, deep flesh almost color. Yeah, we got a good red out of it. It's a bit and nice. I think we need right here.
just to put some placeholder there for some shine build up on the curvature there having that crux terminatus we'll paint that and see what we want to do with all that but get it started You're calling this electric salmon, but that's not a color. I don't care who, what color you're reading. Uh, somebody said coral. This is closer to coral. <laughs> Vandalar the Red, what's going on? Tell what's going on. You're still trying to get in for the signature series of the Monument Obby's joke books on a krill, or how I learned to stop worrying and love the dad joke. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. I am stubborn. I would love to do a Monument Hobbies toilet top reader, though, and and tell you might be able to have some jokes in it, right? I remember growing up, I don't remember whose house it was, my granddad's or somebody's house had, like, the Playboy Book of Jokes or something, some adult joke book thing. And it has stuck with me my whole life. I can't remember a single joke out of it. I just remember that there was a Playboy Book of Jokes that, like was on the top of the uh, magazine rack in the bathroom. I'll know I've made it when we have a toilet joke book. Is the point here that we're trying to make? That is the point we are trying to make, chat. That what we need is a joke book for toilets. Not a joke book that toilets read. That sounds kind of funny, but you know, a joke book for humans that sit on toilets, which is pretty much everybody, by the way. So I think it's a bestseller idea. Gosu. <laughs> Electric Salmon. I refuse to acknowledge this name that you're creating. Neither you nor our AI overlords can convince me. Call anything Electric Salmon. This isn't really even that bright of a color, right? I mean, when you look at it here, it's almost, it's very dark. But the way we've done our red, it's working really, really good as that initial highlight and keeping the red very deep, which is what we want. Because if you go with a very bright highlight here and you do as much highlighting as we're doing, it amplifies that red and desaturates it. I want to keep that real neat red that we've got going on here. Oh yeah, I'm digging this. The Afflicted One, thank you so much. You haven't seen the stream in a while. Finally got a chance to pick up the brush again. Nice. Good to have you back. Hope you're doing well. We're having a low-flying helicopter, so the roof is shaking and my camera is moving. Hopefully that doesn't happen a lot. I well, apologize in advance. Huzzah. I'll just throw back my legs and pollute my britches with delight. Uncle John's bathroom reader, exactly. Sun bleached crimson. Oh, 
Oh, Nick Pie. I like that little line of very small highlights. Like, I didn't put much on there at all. Little dots. You can see the tip of the brush. Not much more than the tip of the brush there. And then feather it a bit. There. And feather it a bit. And then there. And feather that longer because it has a sharper edge to it. But it just makes even the metallic in the darkness like that. It pushes. It keeps the leg further back because it's darker with less detail. So it pushes it into the background, which is what we want. This one's brighter with more detail. Brings it to the foreground. Because that's the leg that's stepping out towards us. Keep this one back here dark, but give it a little punch of brightness on those edges. Make sure we maintain the material. It's still metal. It's still hard. Be the thunder hammer reflecting back in there. Who knows? Jeep with a J demands it. <laughs> no. That's not how this works. That's not how this works. Jeep with a J has no say. <laughs> Jeep's mom has him say, but being very subtle with my highlights and I'm digging it, but I'm not real sure why I'm doing it this way. I would usually be attacking this a little more aggressive. I'm just having a lot of fun painting this. I'm treating it like a display model though, which is scary because I don't really want to have to think about this whole army like display models, but we're kind of there. Well, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, chat. Figure it out as we go. So afflicted, what have you been painting? I love hearing people come back to the hobby if they've been out for a year or two years or 10 years or whatever, right? When you come back, it's always great. Always room for a break. Whether it's job, life in general, got married, had kids. Again, taper your line. See, very thin highlight up here. Press harder on the brush as we go down to thicken that line up as we get down that, towards that corner. Right? So I can barely touch it up here, get a little bit of color on there, and then right about halfway, start pushing harder and real hard down at the edge. So then my edge tapers off. And you get a really nice, call it a blended highlight. It's not really blended, but... Tapered highlight. Base Marines are generally really good for practicing that because you have a lot of real straight edge kind of highlight areas that pretty much demand you be able to uh, do a good edge.
Always trying to finish your 40k stuff. House was hit by a bad storm a while back. Oh, that sucks. Oh, you got displaced. It was that bad. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. Had your son who's about to turn two this month. Also started a new job. Oh, yeah. Kid, blown up house, new job. That's a good excuse. That's a bunch of good excuses back to back. So I'm glad everything's okay. Hope you and the family are doing all right. Happy to hear about the son. Horrible to hear about the house. Happy to hear about the job. I'm on this roller coaster of emotion with you right now, afflicted. This is still just that same color. Just lost in highlight hell. And even when I'm doing it like that, pulling it straight down, just kind of thicken and hit the, the surface more as you go down to thicken the, the brightness up. Here, we have this bright spot that we airbrushed on, and, and it's going to be brightest right here. I'm going to just pile in a lot of the highlight right on that first. Then we're going to taper it off, going to pull a little leg of highlight down this way, and a leg of highlight out that way that will paper as they go away from this heavy spot right here. Almost paint a circle. And then just pull a leg out, go in each direction. Again, just remembering that you don't have to highlight the whole line every time. And by not highlighting the whole line, you get a lot better effect in most cases. A little dimple on the leg plate right here, so we can put a little shine there. But see, I'm not overdoing it. I'm not making it like pinstripe suit. I'm not trying to get every edge. I'm not trying to make every edge a really big blast of contrast. We're using a color that while being bright is not super bright compared to the base coat. And I'm really just focusing all of these edge highlights right towards where the particular piece would be the brightest. So for this little hip plate, it would be this corner right here. Kind of bring your brush from deep in the shadows under the arm, out towards that point. And then since the top of the point is the brightest, bring the brush from down low and back up to the point. Press harder as we get up to the point. Little slanted line is kind of dying to have just a little bit of shine run down here.
You leave the foam circle thingy in the bottle caps? Yes. To start with, yes. That seals the, the bottle. Now, sealed bottles of liquid will pressurize when barometric pressure, humidity changes outside, temperature changes outside, that kind of stuff. So if you have a lot of problem with your bottles, you know, seeping paint out of the lid as you open them, then you can take that seal out. But we always recommend leaving it in at first. Finally got your setup back in the basement doing a commission paint job for a friend. That's awesome. Wild right. It sounds like it. I don't know that I would wish that on anybody, but I'm glad you pulled through. And just kind of thicken my line as I go over towards that top corner where I want it brighter. Keep picking out all these details. Don't go too far. Make it look like a disco ball. I don't want to have a ton of ultra bright on the model, but... Usually the best that these highlights are going to look is right back here in the shadows, right where we have that darker plum and Payne's gray hanging out. We just start catching some of these edges and all of a sudden we get a lot of really cool detail and feel and depth on the model. It looked good when we were doing it on the red. It looks even better when you're back here. The problem is your brain starts getting the, the happy juice kicking in and you're like, oh, we should do this to everything. And then you overdo it. Again, taper that line as it goes up, fades out. I've chopped off, doing all these edges, I've chopped off a hair.
Uh, the bottle sealed well without the caps. The paint doesn't, like, get out into the threads. Air can get through there, but not really paint. Unless you were to take the cap off and then not tighten it back up when you put it back on or something. Hey, somebody likes us. And this really is a color we need to make because this color is a fantastic highlight for reds. We just call it red highlight. <laughs> just, you know, it's peachy flesh is what it is. Bright coral. Crouchy, what's going on? Thank you for the follow. If only we could extract the bottle of the happy juice. I think if you go downtown and look at a street corner, they try to tell you they have done that. Those of you just tuning in, we're doing this guy. Ta-da. A Blood Angels Terminator. A big, chonky, true-scale Terminator. I am really liking that Payne's Gray plum shadow with this highlight color. That's just fantastic. Too easy. Too easy. It's electric, sa eclectic salmon. <laughs> it's eclectic salmon. <laughs> Gosu says I need to sell paint out of taps. Hmm. Hmm. It's eclectic salmon. <laughs> I like I like Nick's uh, version of it better. It's supposed to be electric salmon, but. Sun bleached crimson. You guys are all about the the names today. I I think coral. I think I would call it coral, bright coral. And then we can make a darker version of it too, right? Or because it's really just, I mean, legit, it's just red orange. It's just bright red orange is what it is. Right? Except bright red orange makes coral. <laughs> so I'm like, uh Maybe we just call it coral. I think people get mad, though. People will be like, we liked your names, and then you went and messed it all up. That kind of name is coral. Starting to get into, like, house paint name range when we start calling things coral.
Doug, what's happening? Is it? Uh, what's going somebody on? Somebody likes us. Coral salmon. Electric coral. Hey, somebody likes us. It's electric coral. Thank you for the follows. Everybody is doing well today. Tuesday, and we have interrupted our normally scheduled Nurgle. We have been painting Nurgle. We are stopping paint Blood Angels. Big old chonky Terminator boys. Yeah, I don't think this other guy lives. I'm just going to throw it out there. Electric Walking Dead. It's Electric Carl. Start the memes, boys. Carl. <laughs> we'll just call it Carl. <laughs> okay, if it gets an, e an Easter egg name, it's Carl. Right? Somebody's got to remind me if I get close to releasing this paint. Definitely liking this red, though. I think an entire army of these guys wouldn't be as boring as normal. The thing with armies like Imperial Fist and Blood Angels is that you you get stuck a little bit because your army is so vibrant in its own color. How do you get spots of vibrancy in an Imperial Fist army? <laughs> you don't. It's just like, yellow! And, and then what? <laughs> so you got to create all this contrast on each individual model and then you you go almost for like black like black on the yellow draws the eye to that super contrast for like real matte black whether it's on shoulder plates or insignia or something right because if you just get a table load of of yellow bros you know even we've thrown red on the bolters and the chain swords for these guys and that's still not enough of a table of yellow to even show up Right? Like, you're not even really going to notice that at the end of the day. So there's no way to really go brighter. You know, so when you put, like, Blood Angels on the table, same thing. It's like, what do you do? You can do, like, crackling electric blue or something like that. But, I mean, you know, no matter how many power swords you put in an army, you're going to run out of crackling electric blue at some point. Brilliant reds on yellow. Oh, yeah, I mean, you can obviously make the yellow as dirty as you want to, and then you can pop some color in it. But then, of course, it doesn't make a story, right? Because if the armor's all dull and beat up and battle damaged and dirty yellow, then all of a sudden your reds need to be beat up and battle damaged and dirty reds. So, again, you're stuck in that when you use super vibrant color. I say stuck. You can do it, and it looks great. It just, you know, you have to be aware that that's how your army's going to look. It's going to be a big beacon because of the armor color, right? That's why I'm keeping this a little duller, right? The the red is a little bit less vibrant, so like bright yellow greens for plasma and things like that still give us, you know, we're going to do the the eye sockets in green and and the eye sockets are going to poach out uh, you know, punch out really drastically on the armor plating, which is going to be bitching. So it's okay. 
Oh, just to paint them as if they were yellow ochre marines? Okay, I see your trick. I see your trick. That's not how it works, though. <laughs> Jalapeno acid, what's going on? Gozu didn't waste any time. He's like, all right, I got some. We're done. <laughs> We're done here. Gozu's like, I went, I found Bolter Jugend. I am now printing out true scale Terminators. Hey, somebody likes us. Hey, thank you for that follow. Much appreciated. I did not set out with the idea that we would do this as non-metallic red, but I mean, here we are. So there you go. There you go. This is this is how this is going to go, chat. This army is now never going to get finished <laughs> because I'm having so much fun with the first model that screw paint a bunch of these guys. Not going to happen. Uh, I think Gosu just went to uh, Colts and got it. Bolter Jugend is the gentleman's name who makes the sculpts for all the true scale stuff. But uh true scale heresy, you can go and just buy them fully printed like I do. Put a little bit of shine down the length of the cylinder, the arm here. Trying to haze it by not having much paint on the brush at all. I don't want this to be like super visible, but just brighten up right as it hits the cuff there. The more I look at it, the more I like the idea of black shoulder pads. Not going to lie. Now that we have all this highlight on here, I kind of like the fact that the highlight sits really well on the red on the angular portions. And then on the round portions, I'm not as happy with the red anymore. It's funny how that happens. Like as I look at the model, as we paint it, certain things start to come into focus more on certain shapes than others. I'm thinking maybe we go back to plan A with the black shoulder plates. I don't know. Keep going. Not ready to throw the towel in yet. There are still people in the office packing orders. For those of you that know, that's a big deal. I hope it's not just Jen. <laughs> I hope somebody else on the team stayed with Jen. Jen has been absolute beast mode through this entire product launch. Uh, a bunch of the staff have as well. A bunch of our team members just staying late. Like, got to kick them out of the office because they're just like, let's get this done.
Yeah, I think the black would look good. I'm going to do the heads in black. If we do the shoulders in black, too. I think that could be a really cool contrast to the red, like I was saying, when it's on the table. Give it a really neat overall look and feel as an army. I don't want them to look too flesh terrors, right? I got to make sure our red is still red enough and not just that kind of ruby that you put black shoulders on and all of a sudden they're flesh terrors. Did I make them pack up the Evo bags from my workspace? What are you talking about? Are there Evo bags on my workspace? They're busting hump on everything. No, nothing is safe. No product is safe because right now everything is getting packed. The whole building is getting packed as if we were moving. You walk around, you'd think we were moving because there's so many boxes. Those of you who don't know, hello, my name is Jason. I haven't introduced myself. We are Monument Hobbies. We make this wonderful line of paints called Pro Acryl. And uh, we just released a new set, our signature series sets for uh, Ninjan and Vince Venturella. Last week, believe it or not, oh, it was only, uh, no, it was a week before last. So they've been out for a week now, a full week. And holy hell, it is the biggest release in the company's history. And we don't know what to do. <laughs> we, we're like, uh, so how, type in Google, how do you get orders under a thousand? Every day the gang is shipping, 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 and at the end of the day there's more orders than there were when they began. So it's not—it's a great problem to have, but it's very stressful because we generally are one of the fastest shipping and delivery companies in the hobby industry, and we just can't seem to get through everybody's orders right now. So thank you for bearing with us. If you have an order in the system, you will get it. I swear. This is the way this color looks, right? Again, the color that we're using for a highlight, I keep trying to impart upon you the knowledge that it is not a very bright color. But it sure does appear bright against this deep red that we've created. Hey, somebody likes us. Tiberium Matt, what is going on? Appreciate all the follows today, gang. Thank you for hanging out, watching some paint dry with us. I might paint late. Who knows? I'm having a lot of fun. We'll see where we get. I already highlighted this circle set of hinge points on this side with a highlight here from the front. So on the back, I don't want to do that same thing. On the back, I'm just going to do the highlight, the little shock line of highlight through here, right? Because if I have a highlight that comes around the elbow plate and say has a bright spot like right around here,
and it'll give us a little poke of brightness right here on the elbow. And then we'll do this. We'll just take that bright spot and give it a line. Cuts right through the circle. And gives us that secondary shine on that spherical, well, circular shape. It's not a sphere. And that works fine. Perfect. Ostrich. The ostrich number 25. Hello. How are you doing? I didn't even see what you're painting. Uh, I don't see anything. Do you see something here? <laughs> Waffles. It's really just, I mean, I don't know. I'm using readers. They're very low magnification readers, so it's not like they do much for me. They just make things clear. Um, but I've been painting for so long that you get to this point and it's really just about the patience, right? And so you're just going in and you're putting tiny lines of paint and building it up. And so, yeah, you can see it. It's obviously not hyper detail necessarily that we're painting. But this is just a lot of straight lines and stuff. Not really having to do textures. This is what I call the easy stuff. We're just making it harder than it should be with how we're painting it. Okay, so this thing, I'm assuming, would give us a little bit of a shine reflection back onto the elbow. So I'm going to pull a little bit of short lines perpendicular to that highlight that we created. That. Anything on the cylinder of the arm down here, somewhere right around here. For really no good reason at all, just because it looks a little dull to me. Cylinders have a unique ability to be a playground for putting some shine on. So I'm almost out of paint on the brush. So I'm not going to get a lot of color here. So I'm just going to lay the basis for this shine spot like that. So it's very dull. Then we'll load the brush again. Remember, always be thinking about the fact that what can I use this brush for that has very little color on it? Well, very little color means that I can go in and do something like this where I don't want it as bright as how it is being painted. And then I just come back and reload the brush. And down here at the edge, brighten it up a bit. There. Now I've got a really good blended cylinder highlight on that arm. It was just a little dull. It doesn't have an edge that faces up, so I can't really do an edge highlight on it. But I do something like that. Starts looking good. I'm painting red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> red. <laughs> How are you? Is there anybody here with you? Okay. Who stayed? Um. Jacob. It's been okay. Okay. Warp oh, for warp sheet. Christmas. Oh wow. Uh, okay. Cool. You going home? Yeah. Right. Jacob has. Thank you, baby. Tell them thank you if they leave before I see them. Okay. All right. Cool. I'll figure something out. I'm probably going to paint late. Till 8 million. Chat, how long are you sticking with me? Are we doing 24 hours? <laughs> Jen's like, no, you're not. She's like, no, you're not. Valandar says, I don't see anything I paint. Salt water hurts the finish. Salt, you don't see? Oh, you spell ice? Oh, that's a bad pun. <laughs> it's a bad pun. Oh, the studio's full of bags. It is. They're all over there, though. Holy crap. I always forget that, but when I look over there, there's a lot of go bags in the studio. But there are always over there. This is a big room. It doesn't seem really big because it's just like, you know, my arm's breadth for this wall that you see, and I'm about four or five feet from the wall. But it's a big room. It goes all over there.
Get your first set tomorrow. Your first set of paints in general are our stuff. Ostrich, good to see you, by the way. Welcome, welcome. I'm very happy with this. Probably need some shine on the love handle areas to represent the arms close by. Goes to some handcuffing my, myself to the paint desk and I'm in it for the long haul. All right, that's it. We're done. <laughs> we're, we're done. Gosu, we got Gosu to handcuff himself to the bench. Now we're leaving. Everybody with me. get like squirrel i see this area down here i want a little bit brighter like a so and then we want a little bit of a shine right along here to represent maybe the elbow and same thing over here And maybe a little bit taller and maybe a little bit more shape to it. A thin glaze of, of transparent yellow makes your reds, greens, and some browns really pop. Yep. I'm assuming that's what you mean. Trans oh, yeah, transparent yellow. Yeah, transparent yellow over the top of this is something I'm thinking about doing. After we do all these highlights, a little bit of transparent yellow might get it just that chef's kiss ending. We'll see. I want a little bit of shine right here. You see me do like the palsy, like I got 50 million brush strokes before I make anything happen. I'm lining it up a lot of times. I'll do this and my eyes and everything adjusting into the depth of it and deciding the angle of it. And then I'll finally go in and touch the model with it. But yeah, trans yellow, it works fantastic for going in and uh, adding it as a glaze over the top. I really like filtering it over like that with the airbrush towards the end of a, a model or towards the end of a stage of a model. I don't know that you would necessarily do it at the end of the whole model. You could. But like right now, we could probably get away with adding a, a little bit of transparent yellow over the top. Like, just kind of down. I, the only thing is that I don't want to yellow this out too much. But it could be worth a shot. We'll think about it. I'll think about it. I'll think about it, chat. If this thing exists.
I am liking this. All right, we've got to do a little bit of shine down here, just like we did on the front of the leg, where we just did a little bit of a brush touch, brush touch, brush touch to get some shine in the shadows. Same thing we need to do on this leg here. Whoop. Not much. The brighter you make it, the more it pulls it to the foreground. And obviously, it's the thing in the background. For us right now, it's the furthest thing away from us is this leg. But we got some spots here where it looks like it could have a little bit of brightness, like right here. Quick, thin line, and then give it a little bit of boost in the middle. Like that. And now we've picked it, right? We want it to be along this line here. So let's find that line, how it would hit right here. And then here. Again, I just find a little bit of that edge. And then put some brightness somewhere along that line that I've created. It's that simple, right? We don't have to do a whole lot more than that. But just a little bit of brightness in there pops out the texture of the shiny metal. Right? It's hard surface. So even though it's smooth, right? It's going to reflect. And we just kind of adjust it as we need to get a little bit of brightness. And there we go. We got a shine down the leg. We didn't have to work very hard at that at all. Bam. That makes this need to be brighter. You're priming your colossal squig? That thing's huge, dude. <laughs> that thing's huge. It does eat primer. It's like a primer hog. Very thin down this line and then thicker as we get here towards the bottom where the leg comes out from under the shadow of the torso. Good opportunity to do like a little bolt of brightness reflection right here, just kind of like we did on that other leg in the darkness. Brighten the heel up a little bit, but not. My brush doesn't have much color on it right now, so I want to kind of blur this heel out. Go back and hit it. I don't have much color slopping out there. I think we found the army I'll be painting at LVO. I think I'll take these guys to LVO, take a squad of Terminators or something LVO. So if you're going to LVO, this is, you'll, if you come visit me, this is what I'll be painting at LVO most likely. What do we think? 
Because I'm pretty done. With the red, at least, for now. We'll probably have to do something to the red in here. There'll be a lot of metallic in and around all that stuff, so. Figure that out later. <laughs> 